in this video i am going to explain formulation of linear programming problem and to explain this topic i am going to consider an example in this example a company manufactured two types of chips chip a and b and the unit selling price of the chip a and b is rupees 15 and rupees 25 it is said that profits are proportional to the selling prices to manufacture a the company has to invest 3 hours of skilled labor 2 hours of unskilled labor and 1 unit of raw material and the data for B is also given here. The company has 100 hours of skilled labor, 70 hours of unskilled labor and 30 units of raw material. The company has to produce at least 3 units of chip A and 5 units of chip B. Formulate the problem as LPP. When I have written here formulate the problem as LPP, this means the question asks us to formulate the linear programming problem. Or in a simple way, I can say, I need to know what is the mathematical look of this problem. So how does this linear programming problem look like? Or this is a practical problem. Can I convert this into variables or the maths equations? So we need to understand what is the objective function in my problem, which could be a maximization of minimization. In this problem, it will be a maximization because the profits are mentioned in the problem. So I need to know what is the maximization function and then I need to know what are the constraints in this problem. Okay. These two things that I need to identify. Now look at the data again and in the data I need to identify the available information. Information is that there is a company which manufactured two chips A and B. For these the unit selling price is given to us. If one chip is formed it will give us a profit of rupees 15. If another chip is formed, it will give me a profit of rupees 25. But to manufacture A, there are some skilled labor requirement. There is an unskilled labor requirement and the raw material which is used to manufacture this. This is given to us for both the chips. Let us read down this data from the problem. The company has to investigate 3 hours of skilled labor. So 3 hours of skilled labor, 2 hours of unskilled labor and 1 unit of raw material. This is for chip A. For chip B, this data is 4, 3 hours and 2 units respectively. And also the company has 100 hours of skilled labor. So the total available hours skilled labor, this is 100. So I may write there here is the availability. So this is the total availability of skilled labor. 70 hours of unskilled labor is available and 30 units of raw material is available and the company has to produce at least 3 units of chip A so for the chip A it has to be at least 3 quantity I need or it may be more because it is at least for chip B I require 5 units B should be greater than or equal to 5 this problem I now need to write down into a mathematical formulation so I need to identify how can I write a corresponding problem or the mathematical problem like this and why I am going to call this as a linear so the first thing is that I need to assign some decision variables to these chips and let us write x1 this is the units of chip A that company produced. Okay, I may keep this as a quantity also. I may say that this is the number of the quantity of the chip A or I can simply say the units of the chip A that has been produced. x2 is the units of chip B and here this is a number company produce so, or I may say number of chips so this is the count of chips now once I have decided on my decision variable now once I have decided on the decision variable so I am going to write down it's a maximization problem because the question says the profit were proportional to the selling price and the company want to understand what is the total profit obviously so formulate the problem as a linear model so per unit profit is 15 rupees and it produced x1 unit so the total profit corresponding to the chip A is 15 times x1 plus and the chip B give us a profit of rupees 25 and the total quantity that the company produces is x2. So that means per unit cost multiplied by the number of quantity that has comp that company has produced subject to condition is now look at the condition here. We have considered x1 and x2 the total number of chip. One chip take 3 hours of skilled labor. So that means x1 chips will take 3 times x1 hours plus 
if i only look at the skill labor skill labor will be taken by both the chips x1 also and x2 also so if 3 hours is taken by x1 4 hours are taken by x2 so it is 4 times x2 and the total availability of the skill labor is 100 so this is less than or equal to 100 similarly let us understand from unskilled labor unskilled labor it says 2 times x1 it take one unit takes two hours if i am going to manufacture x1 unit it is going to be two times x1 plus three times x2 the availability is of hours is 70 units and the third constraint will give me x1 plus two times x2 is less than or equal to 30. notice that the left hand side here also represent hours and the right hand side is also hours so we are comparing the same quantities on both sides in the second constraint also it is our and here also it is our in the third constraint it is the quantity of the raw material so this is units of the raw material and left hand side also it is the units available for the raw material data in addition to this there is a restriction on the decision variable x1 was the units of chip a and the condition was the company has to produce at least three units of chip a so this has to be at least greater than or equal to three and x2 is greater than or equal to five now if i look at again this is the formulation for the above problem so we have a problem given in the paragraph form from there i have extracted the data and i'm trying to formulate the problem so the first thing that i've decided it what are the decision variables I need to know what should be I kept as a decision variable and that becomes the mathematically variable. The first line here depicts the objective function and we see here in the objective function the cost is multiplied by say this is the C1 cost this is multiplied by the decision variable. This is the C2 cost multiplied by the second decision variable. Similarly this is the coefficient of the first one and it is multiplied by the first decision variable coefficient multiply by second decision variable and this 100 on the right hand side there is some sort of availability or the resource so this data is about the resource or the availability or maybe the demand also will look up in the next coming up problem so here it can be availability it can be demand based on which we are trying to compare so this whole are constrained and the last part these are restrictions on decision variable these are restrictions on decision variables so mathematically we can see the general linear programming problem look like this we have an objective function here and with this objective function we can see that the cost is multiplied by the decision variable and decision variables degree is one so this is linear so that is why it is linear in the objective function also linear and in the constraint also the degree of the decision variable is one and then we are multiplying by a constant quantity which are actually the coefficient of these decision variable so these all are constraints and the third part is the decision variable this is what we call as non-negative restriction because we have to see what are the restriction on the decision variable practically in my last question we can see that I, I, practically we can see in the last question either company chooses to produce a chip a or b or it may not be producing uh, one of the chips so if in case they do not produce one of the chip then that particular variable will take the value zero it is not negative so the least expected value is that decision variable is greater than or equal to zero and so we can see that in formulating the linear programming problem as mathematical model we need to identify what are decision variables we need to identify what are the constraint and express them in the form of inequalities we see here the symbols can be inequality they may be less than they may be greater than if they are availability it is less than if it is a demand it would be greater than in some circumstances they may also be equal and third identify the objective function and express that in terms of the decision variable and add non-negative restriction so these are the four requirements that we need to extract from the real life problem and we need to write down something like this which we call it as a linear programming so basically it is a programming problem why did we attach the word linear linear only means because the objective function and my constraint both are linear if any one of them either the objective function or the constraint is non-linear then i'm going to say that this problem is non-linear now consider one more linear programming problem it's a pharmaceutical company produces three types of the medicines m1 m2 m3 so i'm also writing this data parallelly so that we can extract the data and we can formulate this problem 
टू मैन्युफैक्चर दीज मेडिसिन थ्री फोल्ड टाइप ऑफ इंग्रेडिएंट एल वन एल टू एल थ्री आर रिक्वायर्ड एल वन एल टू एल थ्री आर रिक्वायर्ड वन एम वन रिक्वायर्स थ्री यूनिट्स ऑफ एल वन सो दिस इज थ्री यूनिट्स टू यूनिट्स ऑफ एल टू टू यूनिट्स ऑफ एल टू एंड वन एम टू रिक्वायर्स टू यूनिट्स ऑफ एल वन वन एम टू रिक्वायर्स टू यूनिट्स ऑफ एल वन थ्री यूनिट्स ऑफ एल टू and four units of l3 l3 ingredient is not required for m1 because it is not available in the data so i am going to consider this is as zero one m3 require four unit of l1 three unit of l3 so four unit of l3 and three units of this again l2 ingredient is not required for the third medicine so this is zero the company has a stock of 40 units of l1 so the availability of the first ingredient this is stock or the availability that is 40 units and 30 units of l2 45 units of l3 the profit per unit of m1 m2 are rupees 8 5 and 13 10 so on this side i can write down the profit this is 8 13 10 formulate the problem as lpp so that company maximize the profit so now i take the decision variable let x i be the units of medicines produced and for each of the medicine m i there are three medicines m1 m2 m3 that i have shown now here with the subscript i and i varies from 1 to 3 so this is the decision variable i have taken up now i want to know what should be my objective function because i want to address the maximization the profit is given corresponding to each medicine so this will become maximization of some function per unit profit is 8 rupees for the first medicine so it i will be multiplying this with the corresponding decision variable that is x1 and similarly 13x2 plus 10 times x3 subject to so these are the condition condition is if i look at now the first ingredient the availability is 40 and this ingredient is required in the manufacturing of all medicines so that means 3 units are required for the first medicine and we are producing x1 units so multiply this with the x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 4 times x3 less than or equal to 40 this is the total availability of the stock look at now the second ingredient this is 2 times x1 plus 3 times x2 less than or equal to 30 this is not required in the third medicine and last l3 ingredient 4x2 plus 3 times x3 less than or equal to 45 and there is no restriction on the decision variable given in the problem to us so we can only say that x1 x2 x3 the company wishes to produce the medicine so either they produce that is greater than equal to 0 or the least value is 0 so this is called the formulation of the above given problem